morning, New Beginning. Welcome once more and again for us to praise and worship God. Will you stand with us as we praise and worship Him this morning?
Reverend Leslie Smith the second. He has been doing the work for the Lord for many decades. Um, some of his work includes founding three Change Happens, Change Happens Services, Change Happens Ministries, and Change Happens CDC. He loves God and he loves God's people. I watched him get up early in the morning while I'm still sleeping and get before the Lord and studying and praying and just spending time with the Lord every morning. Um, I know him to be a true man of God. I know that he lifts up our family in prayer. I know that he fasts frequently. When I say frequently, I'm talking six times a year. To me, that's a lot because I don't do that. So at this time, I would like to welcome to you the man that God has given me to call my husband, Reverend Leslie Smith II. he loves us. Lord, I thank you. And because I thank you. he cares for us and because he has grace and mercy toward us. Thanking him for this privilege to be in this space that we're in right now. I'm sure your pastor had many others that he could have called and asked to come by, but thank God that I'm here today. We welcome you too. Amen. 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 Thanking him for this privilege to stand behind this sacred desk that God has placed him to be the pastor of. Amen. And, to, pastor, and to, sh to share his people that God gave him to shepherd and pastor through life. Amen. So I don't take this moment lightly. I take this moment very seriously because, you know, it's like uh, pretty much, you know, the church is a woman. It's like sharing uh, your bride. Hey, Amen. And that's my bride of uh, uh, since May 1. Hallelujah. 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 Dr. Monica Simmons and uh, Smith and uh, God has truly been good to me. Amen. That uh, God gave me a wife. Amen. And the Bible says, He that findeth, hallelujah, He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Had to go all the way to Alaska to find it. But I found it. Actually, down in the bush of Alaska, that she was uh, uh, working, and I found her over there in Mountain Village, Alaska. Praise God! Praise God! Praise God. But uh, thank God for my beautiful wife, and and I thank God for what God is about to say. I believe that God has uh, given a word for us today. Amen. And uh, that word uh, can be found in the uh, book of Exodus. Okay. I got all excited when I uh, read this word. It was in one of my uh, morning with God. Mm. One of the greatest things that I have in life right now is to spend time with God. Isn't that right. wonderful? I cannot go through a day hmm. unless I go in early in the morning All right. and put some time in. That's right, man. But one morning, I went in and, and I think it was, what, week four last, I went in and God had brought me to this particular passage of scripture. 
And uh, I, it, it just jumped out to me. Mm -hmm. And my wife, she usually joins me after I've been out there for a while. And she's still in her sleep mode to come and just lay there on my lap or put her head on my lap while I'm still spending time with God. Amen. And it's a good time for us to, for me to lay hands on her and me to pray for her and me to ask God to continue to bless her life and bless our lives. Amen. Amen. But after she came back to full consciousness that morning and after prayer, I told her about this scripture and she got excited. All right. And you're not wise, uh, those of you that got wise, uh, 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 they always got some input. <laughs> And she gave me her input, and it was right along with my input what God had uh, had had downloaded to me that morning. But in Exodus, in the thirty third chapter, and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Testament because of uh, uh, the King James. I'm a King James version person, but that morning God showed me this in the New Living Testament. Uh, the NLT and in the 8th verse I'm going to start reading there and it said whenever Moses went out to the tent of meeting mm -hmm. now King James said tabernacle mm -hmm. but it says whenever Moses went out to the tent of meeting all the people would get up and stand in the entrances of their own tents. And they would all watch Moses until he disappeared inside the tent of meetings. As he went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and hoover at its entrance while Moses spoke, while God spoke with Moses. And when the people saw the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they would stand and bow in the front of their own tent. And inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. As one speaks to, what your Bible say? A friend. Afterwards, Moses would return unto the camp, and the young man who assisted him, Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. And inside the tent, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. As one speaks to a friend. Amen. And if I had to put a subject matter for a moment, it would be tent revival. All right. All right. A tent revival. You can take your seats. I don't know if you remember, way back in the day, they would have. Uh, tent revivals. Yeah. Uh -huh. I remember them. Yeah. And I remember them when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. They would pitch, pitch these tents in big old open fields. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you would have to walk out to this tent mm -hmm. to get inside the tent. Mm -hmm. yeah. People would come from all around to experience what went on in those tents. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, the tents that was thrown up around me, they had drums, mm -hmm. tambourines, yeah. people shouting, yeah. dancing, mm -hmm. full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand at the time that was the Holy Ghost that come upon them, but they were just cutting up in these tents. Yeah. They called them tent revivals. Yes. 
And the purpose of these tents was to come under the tent one way and leave out another way. You come in with burdens and with problems and with issues and with, with things that's out of whack and you leave out with a sense of peace. With a sense of joy. With a sense of happiness because you know that you've had, oh hallelujah, this wonderful experience at this tent meeting. In 2008 or 10, God placed on my heart to put up a tent in the middle of third war. All right. In the middle of third war. And so I said, okay, God, I threw this tent up. And I was going to do this tent only for seven days. But the end of the seven days, God told me, don't take it down. All right. So I left this tent up for another seven days. And at the end of that seven days, as I approached it, God said, leave the tent up. All right, now. So I did it for another seven days. So this tent ended up staying up for 21 days. And folks from all in and around Third Ward, from Crack Alley to the bottom to the hilltop, That's all right. That's what he wants. was walking into this tent. My intent for this experience was to only have it for one week. Mm -hmm. But God taught me a valuable lesson. Uh -huh. That when you get to him, you can't limit it, his time. Right. Right. Because God's time is not our time. Right. As far as from the earth to, to heaven is God's way. So God does not measure his time like we measure ours. But in this particular text, Moses had erected this tent and they called it the tabernacle. But let us not get mistake, mistaken here. The tabernacle of God had not been built yet. God met Moses, oh hallelujah, Come on. in a tent. Yeah. He met Moses in a tent. So it was, in verse number seven, it said, it was Moses' practice to take the tent of meetings and set it up some distance from the, tent, from the camp. Everybody or everyone who wanted to make a request of God would go to the tent of meetings outside the camp. But the thing about it, could nobody go in but Moses. The only person that was admitted into this tent was Moses and he went in and he interceded for the people of God. But it says Moses was the only one to go in. And everybody else, as Moses walked toward the tent, would stand and watch Moses. They watched him until he entered the tent. And after he would enter the tent, a cloud, a pillar came down. That let, them know, that let everybody know that God, oh hallelujah. He's on the scene. My God. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Y'all yeah. stay with me for just a second. I'm almost, I'm getting, I'm getting to the middle. I'm almost yeah. to the close. Yeah. All right. <laughs> when they saw this pillar of cloud come down, they knew that God was in the midst. Amen, amen. Of the tent. Oh, my God. And while, whenever God showed up, it said in the Bible 
that him and Moses mm -hmm. would talk like friend mm -hmm. to friend. My God. Yeah. My best friend and I, we went out last night to uh, uh, to the game mm -hmm. that Deion Sanders bought the town. Mm -hmm. And it was an enjoyable game because guess what? I had my best friend, my wife permitted me to go across the street because we live right across the street from the soccer arena where the game was. And I was able to sit for two hours, enjoy this game, and talk to my friend. Can you imagine sitting down with God, talking to God, friend, to free. All right. I told my wife, uh, I believe here either this morning, I told her, I said, babe, uh, Moses has some kind of relationship yes. with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That God would sit down, like just sit like, like, like my friend was sitting with me last night, last evening. Oh, what a and carry on a conversation. Right there. Wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Oh, oh my God. Do y'all see where I'm going with yeah. this? Yeah. Hey, hey, I want to go and go right to, to the meat of the matter. <laughs> but I want to set this up to let you know that Moses had this type of relationship. And it was wrote, it was written in the Bible, guess what? For our good. Cousin Moses had it. Right. Oh! Take the time. Come on. If Moses had it. But the purpose of Moses going to the tent at this particular time, he had just been come down off Mount Sinai and God had given him the Ten Commandments. But while he was up there, right. some ruckus broke loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went wild. It went wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they went butt naked wild. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they told the Aaron that Moses is gone. Yeah. And we don't know what can happen to Moses. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we need something that we can see. Yeah. Uh -huh. We want a God that we can touch yeah, yeah, and feel. Yeah, yeah. And their leader up there talking to God at this particular time, yeah. friend to friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they wanted a God that they can touch. So they bought all the earrings, they bought all the jewelry, and had Aaron yeah. to make a golden calf. Yeah. And while Moses was up in Mount Sinai, him and God talking and conversing and he giving those commandments, God said, them folks done went crazy down there. Yeah, yeah. Them, uh, them folks done lost their mind. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much done with them. Mm -hmm. So Moses at this particular time, this was his third intercession for Israel. He was pleading to God, don't destroy him. Yes, sir. Please, Lord. Now, wait a minute. You got to understand what God had done. God had delivered them from Egypt uh -huh. by plagues and signs. Uh -huh. God, oh, have mercy, Jesus. God had brought them up to the Red Sea yeah, yeah, yeah. and parted the waters. My God. Yes. Have some of you had have some of us some of us that had some Red Sea. Oh, yes. 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 Some of us that had some miracles and some wonders. Yes, Lord. Some of us have have seen without a doubt the hand of God. Yes, yes, yes. And these people witnessed it at first hand. My God. Hallelujah. And they said, we want a God, yeah, my God. that we can put our hands on. Yeah. And God my had got tired of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You know, people ask me, and they say, Leslie, how you doing, man? I say, I'm doing fine. Mm -hmm. I got the favor of God. Yeah. And I'm doing everything I can yeah. do not to knock his hand off me. I don't want God to take his hand off me. So in order for God not to take his hand off you, you got to make it your business oh, to do what it takes for God not to remove his hand. Because see, this is a, these, these folks have done this repeatedly doing their journey from Egypt. That's right. God had repeatedly delivered them and delivered them and delivered them and delivered them. Mm -hmm. And they still didn't act right. Mm -hmm. God is looking for some people to act right. That's right. That's right. Oh, That's right. This is good, y'all. All right. So this was his third intercession. Over in chapter 32, his first intercession in Moses in verse 32 and 11 it says and Moses besought the Lord his God and said Lord why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a great mighty hand he said don't get mad at them now you brought these folks <laughs> And you know what God always did? He would all call you all, and then he'll go back to Moses and say, them your folks. <laughs> <laughs> them ain't my folks. Because my folks would have believed in my mighty, powerful, delivering hand. Yeah. I stopped by here today to tell you that God that delivered you yeah. repeatedly not just you, me too. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly. And repeatedly. So Moses was up. He went in and he pleaded the first time. Mm -hmm. Then he went in for a second intercession with God. Pleading for the folks. Down in verse 32. And 31 he said. And Moses returned unto the Lord. And said unto him again. O oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made gods of gold. Mm -hmm. Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sins mm -hmm. and if not if you can't but, but forgive them, blot me out. Alright, alright. Oh my God. Right. Ain't none of us gonna do that for somebody out there sinning. <laughs> and we know they sinning. And we know they do it wrong. Oh, no. And Moses said, and if you can't blot me out, I pray thee, mm. out of the book which thou hast written. My God. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Which of you yes, mm -hmm. yes, would give his life for a friend? Uh, for somebody, uh, even not even a friend. I'm sure Moses had a bunch of haters in the bunch. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm sure Moses had some folks in the midst that just didn't like it. All right. But Moses was willing to say to God, God. if you can't forgive them, block me out. My. Your friend. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And so the tent of meeting is where God met with Moses. Mm -hmm. And Moses was able to walk in face to face as friend to friend. Mm -hmm. For it says in verse number 9 of 33, it came to pass, Moses entered the tent or the tabernacle or the tent and that pillar would descend. And this, this, before I get there, y'all, those of us that got our tents, mm -hmm. you know where your tent at. Uh -huh. <laughs> Every time I leave our bedroom and I walk toward the kitchen, 
there's a place right there I meet God. Mm -hmm. Right there on that sofa, that corner sofa. Mm -hmm. Now that's one of my tents. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that's one of my tents. And then I can go on down toward the, the garage. There's a TV room off to the right. That's another tent. Mm -hmm. When you pass your tent, you'll know you're passing it. That's right. Now, if you don't know you're passing a tent, definitely you ain't got no tent. <laughs> you know where your tent is. So in Moses' third appeal to God, he took it to the tent. Uh -huh. He sought to change God's mind. He sought to change Yahweh's mind about the fact that God had told him when he was up on the mountain, uh -huh. I'm not going, I'm going to take you to the promised land, but I'm not going with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'll let you go, but I ain't going with you. All right. For God said to Moses in verse number three, he said, Moses, go on up to the land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of thee. For thou art with a stiff-necked people, lest I consume them in the way. Uh -huh. Meaning God was saying, if I walk with you, yeah. And this old stiff neck folk keep acting like they acting. Uh -huh. I'm going to consume them. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mean God said I can't walk with them. And that's why I want to tell you, you don't never want to knock God's hand off you. Yeah. That's right. And you know what Moses told him? Moses said, if, we can't walk, if you can't go, leave us here. That's right. Oh. Come on now. You don't want to go nowhere God ain't going. Do you hear me? God told him, I can't walk with you. Because the folks are stiff neck. Yeah. And you know what a stiff neck is. Yeah. Stiff neck person can only see what? Their way. Is one way or no way. That's right. Is one way or the highway from whoever else. You want to stay away from stiff neck folks. You want folks who got soft necks toward God. You want folks who necks are be able to turn and hear and see God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm almost there now, y'all. All right. So Moses made appeal to God based on two different things. He appealed to God in verse 3. Verse 13, he said, Now therefore, if I have found favor. Mm -hmm. Now I know you didn't say what you wanted to say. But if I done found favor, have a change of mind. All right. About wanting to kill these folks. All right. And you know what? I'm going to go and share. This is the kind of conversations we ought to be having with God. Yes, yes, yes. God, you know I've been stiff necked on some stuff. Yeah. You know I've been rebellious of some ways. Yeah. You know I ain't done everything right, but please. please. Because I done walk with you. Uh -huh. Because I done talk with you. Have a little mercy. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and he and, and, and the second appeal he made, he said, Now therefore consider this nation is your people. Mm -hmm. You gonna go and destroy your people? Mm -hmm. And then he went on and said, Look what the other folks gonna say about you. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. You done brought all these right. children of all Israel right. out of Egypt to destroy them in the wilderness. How this gonna make you look out with God? I talk to God like that at times. Now you know what they get. I've been telling folks I love you all my for all these years, and now you ain't gonna get me through this. All right. Come on now. Come on. And folks know what I'm going through. They gonna say, Where is his God now? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah, y'all. All right. Now those are the kind of conversations I have with you. I said, you done bumped me out here. Yes, God. 
And you didn't deliver me all those other times. And all these folks that look at me, my haters, they're going to say, where is his God now? My God. So that's how, and, and, and so, so, so Moses, first of all, appealed to God on his relationship, uh -huh. and then he appealed to God on his promises. Yes, yes. But he says, for I will never leave. Oh, oh, oh. No, not forsake you. All right. I will be with you. Oh, I want you to know that God is with you. You might it might not feel like it at times, but don't go off that feeling. God is not a feel good God. <laughs> God is a faith God. It's that faith that when we go sit down in them chairs, uh -huh. we know that chair going to hold us. Right. Right. It's that faith <laughs> when we go sit down on an airplane that we don't even know how high it flies. Uh -huh. And we just get on there all comfortable. Uh -huh. Now God is better than them chairs because they will break. Yeah. 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 God is better than them airplanes because they will crash. God ain't gonna never break. And God is ain't gonna, ain't gonna never crash. So Moses made this appeal twofold. From his personal experience and from the promises of covenant. Now, this was Exodus 19 and 5. This is the good scripture. You need to write that down. It says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed mm -hmm. and keep my promise or keep my covenant, mm -hmm. then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Come on now. Moses up here saying, Now them your folks. <laughs> and you promised them. Yeah. That they were going to be peculiar. Mm -hmm. That they're going to be special. Yeah. From here to eternity. Yeah. Jesus died for us. Yeah. That we can be with God from where? From here to eternity. Yeah. Yeah. So Moses, he appealed to God. And when Moses went into the tent, Meaning, he asked God for several things. He asked God in verse 13 of 33. He asked him, he said, show me your way. All right, Lord. Now, when you get in your tent, that's the first thing you want to ask God. Mm -hmm. Show me your way. Mm -hmm. For in Psalms it says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. I did a 30-day fast a month and a half ago. And that whole fast was that God would lay out a path for me. Mm -hmm. I had to make a decision. I had to make sure my decision of the way I was going was the right way. So for 30 days, I fasted that God would lay that path out. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And in those 30 days, God assured me mm -hmm. that the path that I was on was the right path. All right. And you know what he said? At the end, I ain't going to show you this no more. I haven't showed you once already. I haven't showed you twice. Mm -hmm. Don't keep coming after me for the same stuff. I say, well, Lord, if I do, forgive me. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I do, forgive me. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of conversations I have. I mean, these are the kind of conversations I have with God. Mm -hmm. These are the type of conversations you should be having. Yeah. Talk to you, just like you talk to your friend about anything. Mm -hmm. I can talk to my friend Clayton about pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And he can talk to me about anything. But God is better than my Clayton. Mm -hmm. Yes, He is. Yes, he Do you is. hear me? Yes. 
God is better than my wife. I told her the other day, she, she said, I said, what you need in life? I said, I only need God. She said, what about me? I said, you have to God. <laughs> I said, I got to have God first. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. She said, what about me? I said, yeah, baby, you second. That's it. Don't ever put nothing, nothing. before God. And that's what Israel did. They might want to go to the cave. And so he says, show us thy way. And also in that same verse, he said, help us our need. Show us the way our need and the desire to know you. As you show us, help us to know you. And when I read that, I thought about Philippians 3 and 10. It said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You know, if you know God, that's all you need to know. That's right. That's right. I don't have to look at it. Say that again, Pastor. If you know God, that's all you need to know. That's right. You know why, that's right. You, you know why that is? Because if you know God, I mean, really know God. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. God wants to have an intimate mm -hmm. relationship with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wants to be intimate with us. But in order for God to be intimate with us, we got to know him. How do you get to know him? By spending time with him. I know my wife because I spend time with her. She know me because she spend time with me. But God wants to know us like we know one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to sit down with each of us mm -hmm. and share with us and talk to us. And not only that, listen to us. Lord, Lord. I mean, have a conversation. I, I, I have these back and forth conversations with God. And then when I have these back and forth in conversation with him, he'll sink within my heart. What he didn't already told me. He'll speak to me. I said, okay, God. I hear you. Mm -hmm. So not only that, that we, and Moses said, show us that we might know you. He said, I want to also find grace in your sight in this tent meeting. Mm -hmm. God responded to Moses' request. He said, I know I said I wouldn't go now. I didn't want to walk with them folks. Mm -hmm. But he said, my presence mm -hmm. will go with you. Now that you done came and you done interceded in verse 17, he said, my presence yeah. going to be there. Come That's on. all I need. Yeah. If God is presence mm -hmm. is with me, mm -hmm. I can deal with it. Yeah. It's when God ain't with me when things bother me. Right. I might go to cussing. <laughs> I might go to cussing if God ain't with me. But God turns that into something else when he's with you. But during this time, all the people that could go in the tent was more, once they built the tabernacle, and all the people that could go into the inner of inners was a priest and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that had to be only the high priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could go into this inner sanctuary, a tabernacle of this, where once they built the tabernacle. And this tent that Moses set up was symbolic of what the tabernacle was going to be by. Mm -hmm. Everybody couldn't go up in there. But I stopped by to tell you, that in Mark 15 and 38, and it says that, and the veil of the temple was rent in two from top to bottom when Jesus died on the cross. Yes. Yes, God. Thank now guess what? You and I got that right to go in to the inner of inners, and guess what? 
sit down with God. All right, nine, nine. All right. Hey, God. Nine, Lord. <laughs> How you doing, God? Mm -hmm. I'm doing fine, God. I tell you what, God, I got some, I got some issues I got. Yeah. I got some problems I got right now. Mm -hmm. I got, I got, I got some things. I got some things I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Because the veil of the temple was rent. Yeah. We can go in now for yourself. All right. You don't need Moses. You don't need the priest. You don't need nobody but you and you alone. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank me, Lord. For it says in Hebrew, by a new and living way, which he has concentrate, concentrated us through, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they killed and nailed our Lord and Savior, Jesus, on the cross, that was the splitting of the veil of his flesh. Right. Now through his death, we got access to the inner of inners. You are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a prince and a queen in the family of God. Why don't we act like that? We end up doing like Israel doing. We get stiff neck. We get in our mindset. We ain't got enough. Uh, we don't. We want more. Uh, I'm not happy with this. If God is with you and with us, I don't care where you are. I don't care what you experience. God has placed that path. In, on your route right now. Yes, yes. And that path that you're on is going to lead to something great. Yes, thank you, Jesus. So, in Hebrews it also says, since now that this veil and we have access to God, we can sit down with him and conversate with him it says, let us come boldly. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what boldly means? <laughs> that walking up to the throne, the throne of grace, like you belong there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you got some arrogancy in your walk. Right. A little bit cocky. Uh -huh. I got God. Uh -huh. <laughs> So it says, let us come therefore boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help in the time of need. Right. If you don't have a tent that's set up at your house, if you don't have a closet, your prayer closet, if you don't have a place there, I encourage you to go home today and take some oil <laughs> and I'm not that place as the place where you and God are going to meet. I have anointed that, that chair, that, that couch in the corner, I've anointed that uh, TV room, and I've anointed the bedroom. <laughs> Because I want God all over my house. I got three places, and guess where else? My car. Because I spend 30, 40 minutes in that going to work. I put me some Tony Evans on, or some Chuck Swindoll, and I listen, or some TD. And I'm riding and I'm listening. You got to shelter yourself what you listen to, too. <coughs> What's that guy that, you can't be listening to that takeoff stuff. 
<laughs> no, it didn't help take off. Lord, help me that we killed each other. It's sad, 28 years old, that we are killing each other. And that's because God is not there. Now, that's it. I ain't got no whoop. I ain't got no hollow. That's it, y'all. <laughs> y'all give God a hand. That's okay. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. It's about you establishing a place to meet with God in a tent meet. And wherever that is, you need to get it established. I believe that if there's anyone here to say that want to make a deeper uh, commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this is that moment that you can come and you can give your life. It's all about eternal life. And eternal life don't start when you die. <laughs> eternal life starts when you accept Jesus Christ. And so now you've got some eternal life here on earth that will be able to usher you in the glory. And when is that moment? But eternal life starts right now. You don't just die and get it. You get it right now. That's why the Bible says, and when he taught us, his disciples, how to pray, we pray that thy kingdom come. What's up in eternity, I want it right now. I want whatever you got in heaven here on earth. So eternal life. If there's somebody here today that's wanting to accept Christ and have not accepted Christ into your life, this is the time that you can accept Jesus and Jesus will enter into your heart and Jesus will become your Savior and your Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God for those that are here. We now prepare ourselves for the uh, Lord's Supper. Oh, tithes and all. Now, who does that mean? Okay. But the Bible says, well, there are two or more gathered. This is Leslie Smith version. Wherever there are two or more gathered, you should take up an offering. God didn't say that. He says that wherever two or more gathered, I'll be in the midst. But this is time for you to give, and we're going to ask that our uh, deacons, persons, will take over at this time.
us for this moment to give thanks and praise to God Amen. for allowing us to sow seeds into his kingdom. That there may be me in this house, said the Lord. Prove me now here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I would not open the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. We thank you for each and one, every one that gave and for each and every one that had not but had a desire. Amen. We pray that they may have a desire or be blessed on next time to sow a seed into the kingdom of God. These and all blessings we have our daughter, son, Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Let us now prepare our hearts for the uh, Lord's Supper. And um,
This is the bread that represents my body that hung, bled, and died on the cross that represented his body for us. Let us take and eat. And this, and this represents the blood that was shed for our sins that he paid the price that actually represented the veil that was rent by his flesh. Let us drink all of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us stand for the benediction. First, for I say the benediction, thank you for your patience and allowing me to share what I believe God gave me. Yes, amen. And thank you for your understanding and your tolerance because I'm not your pastor and could have looked up here and saw your pastor not here and decided to leave. But you stayed. Amen. And I am grateful. We love you. Amen. Give God a hand. Amen. Again, thanks for my beautiful, supportive wife for being here with you today. Brother Gilmore, right? for assisting me because I was out of my arena this morning. And thank you for your help. Dear God, we, dear God now we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this privilege. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you as a friend. Now help us to develop more of a relationship with you. Let us leave this place with the burn, the desire to create this atmosphere with you that we feel as though we are talking to our friend. And we know you are our friend. Because the song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. And we love you and we praise you. Now your spirit, we ask that it will go with us, abide with us until we come back again to this place. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.